What is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am Akabane101, and today is February 28th, 2012, and I am Akabane101 wearing my Day 9 TV shirt because that's how we like to roll here on Peg TV. And that's pretty much what I like to do because he's pretty much the guy that started pretty much any reason why I wanted to start a daily. So, yeah, today we're going to be looking at just how losing can be so oh so amazing because losing actually really does support your ability to be awesome because that's just how it works in the StarCraft world. You ever play a game of chess and you're playing with your friends and your friends just know everything? Well, that's because they've probably lost almost even more than you have. So keep losing but play really well so you get a proper you know study on how you're losing your games. Uh, but basically what we're going to be looking at is my games here uh, that I've played a couple couple days ago, I'm pretty sure some of you saw them, and um, I just was not winning. I just was, you know, doing so poorly, and at the end of the game, I probably didn't even realize why I lost. So this is why we're looking at my games, because then I get to, you know, um, explain exactly what was probably going through my mind, but I also want to explain how I am going to slowly progress um, from being someone that has no idea what I what I was doing, and then growing forward into the game, and... Uh, that's pretty much what we're going to do. We're going to learn exactly how to detail through your own replays, how to criticize yourself, and this is exactly why I'm criticizing myself. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try not to be as biased as possible uh, and play through the game. All right. So we'll skip over to the main screen here, and this is obviously me spawning as the uh, Protoss player here. And of course, I think my headphones are... Oh no, the sound's not on. Oh god, I no, always got to start a daily with the sound being completely off in uh, this situation here. And of course, both players given the good old good luck, have fun as the game decides to crash on me a little bit. Because my encoder's like, you want to play at times two speed? Like that's ever going to happen. And of course, my opponent is a Zerg player. Um, I generally do have a lot of issues with Zerg. And this is what you need to ask yourself. What is your worst matchup. Um, that's pretty much the beginning of everything that you play here. Wh what do you feel what do you feel when you go into a StarCraft 2 game? Do you feel scared when you're playing a Zerg player? Are you worried about what the Zerg player is going to do? Now in general I don't mind playing any of the uh, of the opposing races uh, when I am indeed playing StarCraft 2. I don't have any fear. It's just about me trying to work on my uh, my strategy and what I do. And so in every game, you have to have a plan. So my plan is to always make sure I get a lot of units out on the field. But that's probably where I have to draw the line here. I have to say, oh, well, I'm, I'm getting all these units out, but am I getting the right units out? And in, in this kind of situation here, when you're against an opponent, as my encoder is going like, uh, please stop recording at fa faster speed. Um, you basically start to realize that, hey, this game is, you know, uh, is you need to pay attention to exactly what your opponent's doing. And this is uh, this is where I'll play on faster speed, so there's no more lag going on. And, of course, my probe gets chased away by a few too many drones there. Uh, and, you know, I just try and check out what his base is doing. And, of course, it gets eaten, so... Uh, in in a note, you probably don't need to worry about your probe um, in general. Or I'm in Platinum League, so if you're, like, a person that's in the Platinum League and lower... Uh, you generally don't need to worry about that. Diamond, you will need to worry about it a little bit more. Um, making sure that probe stays alive a little bit longer because you need to know exactly when your opponent's going for that hatchery. Because as you could tell, I couldn't even, I didn't have any idea what that hatchery was going to be planted or not, or not. All I knew is what he had in his base, which was, I believe, a spawning pool and an extractor. So, uh, if you're platinum leaking down, don't worry too much about the probing. Um, but any anywhere above that, make sure you try and keep that a little bit more alive. And of course, my good old friend, Nicky Polito, has just jumped into StarCraft 2, but I'll have to put this on busy because this is how the game has to work today. So, uh, looking over at my opponent's base, and we're not even going to pay attention to my opponent too much, but all I know on my opponent's base is that he is making a spawning pool. Good. Excellent. So I do know that my opponent's making a spawning pool, which means his hatchery will be coming out a little bit later. This is always very solid. I do find that a lot of the times a lot of players have the very beginning of the game more or less understood. When you're playing as Protoss, of course, getting the gateway out, getting your uh, Cybernax core out directly after you get um, a simulator during your creation of your gateway. And then the uh, Cybernax core being produced, which will allow your Zealot to basically wall off 
this little portion here. This is all fine and good. I do enjoy that I'm able to see that I'm constantly producing probes and I'm constantly able to, you know, uh, make sure I understand how to deal with a Zerg opponent. Because a lot of players do not. A lot of players don't know how to wall off as a Protoss player. Um, and of course, this is specifically a PvZ game. Um, I know you guys are probably going to get sick of that pretty quickly because I am a Protoss player right now. But of course, we'll be doing some Zerg vs. Zerg and all that other crap later on in the future of my daily episodes. So this is where I plant my gateway. And of course, I'm going to try and speed up. There's probably going to be a little bit of uh, lag glitches here. Second gateway going down. Um, and of course, not going to be getting that expansion out anytime soon. His Zerglings come up, they can't really do anything, that's pretty nice, and that's the whole idea of putting a Zealot on hold position here. Really, really solid to allow the Zerglings not to be able to get up uh, to here. And you guys may be wondering, why are you showing a game where you're doing okay? Well, this is one of the first things that you could probably point out, is I didn't get my assimilator, uh, I didn't get any guys in my assimilator very fast at all. This is what you guys need to point out. Okay, so we'll speed up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, pause, slow down a little bit. Okay, so let's count. Okay, right now it's around 520 is where the assimilator is finished. That's when I should have been sending guys over. So if we wait until I send guys, um, this could probably take about 10 seconds. So this is actually pretty important to pay attention to. It's mainly your timings not and not your army when you're paying attention to a analysis of your own game. And it took about 20 seconds there in game time to, uh, to really, for me to pay attention that, oh crap, I got an assimilator finished. And that's only because if I look at my camera here, I was more or less paying attention as we go back a little bit. I don't know the back button, so I apologize for scrolling back and forth like I am right now. Um, but if you look at my camera here, you probably could tell that, oh, I was probably paying more attention to what the Zerglings were doing here. And I have absolutely no vision over here. Oh, I probably don't even have my camera up, but yeah. And then I finally go ahead and put my probes over into my simulator. So, not the biggest of issues here, but of course, um, it's something to point out. How long are you waiting to put your units into your simulator? Are you constantly producing probes? Um, sometimes you guys probably want to just look at a game on the production tab here for the entire game or simply look at your Nexus and whenever your Nexus is not making any more probes you should definitely pay attention to that because this is a... I've actually stopped making probes probably around a six minute mark and you generally want to constantly keep doing that. Now, a nice thing I did, this is probably why I wasn't producing pros for a decent amount of time here, was that I told my stalker to go up and scout for the uh, observer, and I was probably paying attention to that a little bit too much. So make sure that you're not paying attention to, de to things that are pretty much arbitrary. A lot of the times when you are playing a game such as StarCraft, you're looking at portions of the screen that you actually do not need to look at at all. In general, when you're looking at, say, your stalker kill off an observer, as as fast as you possibly can, you know, box your stalker or click on your stalker, attack the observer, and then as fast as you can, look away. Don't worry about it ever again. If your stalker decides to, hey, I want to leave the base and go kill that observer, that's fine. You know that you didn't kill the observer because you'll see your stalker going, hey, I can't actually reach that guy. Okay, let's go Let's go leave the base and see what I can do about that. Uh, unless you have your zealot in a whole position and your guy can't really go anywhere at all. But in, in, in most situations here, um, do not pay attention to the combat at all. Because then you're actually going to not pay attention to your nexus, like I am here. Of course, as you can tell, I'm not paying too much attention. I wasn't paying too much attention to my nexus. And this is another thing that I, I shouldn't have done, um, of course. Uh, a lot of players, including myself obviously, have done this before where I send both zealots out when I really meant to send just one. This is uh, when boxing becomes an issue here. Uh, because look what happens. Zealots are not as fast as speedlings. You should never send your zealots out here, but I think I was getting a little bit impatient and wanted to get myself an expansion. Of course, it's like 6 minutes and 40 seconds into the game. So, uh, you always want to play carefully and of course the probe didn't make it there in time to at least block him for a few seconds and ooh, looks like the Zerglings get into my base and do a little bit of damage here. They're gonna kill off a few probes. Uh, luckily I decided to go for the attack and uh, did that. And of course, you know, my stalker is like, hey, well at least I tried to kill some of them, but now I'm able to get my expansion. This is uh, around when you want to go for more timing issues here. Um, what am I doing in my base? Uh, how is my money doing? Oh my god, look at that money. Um, this is a huge factor you want to look at. And uh, let's actually go back just a little bit to around the 5 minute mark on, uh, on just how my money is going up. And wow, it's already up pretty high around the, that mark there. 
So definitely something to pay attention to. So this is where my money's low, and we're going to speed through the game a little bit. We're not even going to really pay attention to what's going on in the game, so I'm just going to have it clicked on my Nexus. I'm going to speed up the game to around eight times, and once this goes up, gets up above 500, I want to see what I was doing to spend that money on anything, if anything at all. So now I have about 500 money, 600 money. Oh my god, this is around the six minute mark. Um, and then I spawn in some units, but that's not even going to be enough. So this is where we see that, oh my, I'm paying way too much attention to these Zerglings. Way too much attention to the Zerglings. And I know I know a lot of you, too, have been doing uh, this, where you're playing a Zerg opponent and you're Protoss, and you're like, oh my god, my Zerglings are in my base. Grr, what am I supposed to do? Just attack with your probes. Tell one of your probes to go build some stuff uh, while you're doing that, and you'll come back and see dead Zerglings in your base and a few dead probes as well but I mean in general you're actually gonna find that to be a lot nicer so as you can see I even I mess up quite a lot because I'm in platinum but it doesn't really matter too much what 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 position you're in but of course definitely importantly good to note which in this case probably gave me the idea to go make an expansion because I have oh my god lots of money but what do you need to do when you make an expansion? As you can see, there's already an error here that I'm doing. Um, what I need to do is do my best to try and get all these units down here as fast as possible uh, and make sure that I am protecting my own um, expansion. Because if we look on the Everyone tab, Zerg already has this expansion and it's protecting its base. This is because it's massively droning up as fast as it possibly can. Oops, I don't want to go in the Army tab. And also it even has a, uh, a macro hatchery, so a macro hatchery will allow him to produce even more and more units. So if I were to attack his base, he'd be totally fine, because these spine crawlers are going to be up in about no time. And uh, look at my base, I'm, I'm just creating my expansion, and of course there's a lot of issues here. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of gaps that could allow my uh, Zerg opponent to in fact win this fight quite easily and I don't really have any units protecting it, so that could uh, really indeed hurt, especially if a whole bunch of Zerglings just ran into my base and it was like, oh, I can eat all your probes now. So of course, uh, another problem was I wasn't producing probes, so I definitely need to work on that. So this is, this is me trying to crucially point out exactly what I'm doing wrong in my game. And this is what you guys need to do too. Look at what you're doing. Say you're doing things bad. Say that you're, you need to work on getting your money lower, your gas lower, because you'll find that really quickly you're going to have all that money uh, spent as fast as possible because money in the bank is in, in StarCraft 2 is uh, not, not wanted. You do not want money in your bank in StarCraft 2. In real life, you do. In StarCraft, throw all that behind. Spend, spend, spend as fast as possible like you're in a shopping mall and uh, you're trying to buy your girl something, you know, fantastic like 10 rings for 10 marriages because why the hell not you have all this money in your bank? Why? So, going back into the game, this is what you need to go in your mindset. Make sure you keep spending your money, of course. And, of course, he gets an overlord into my vase. I don't know why I called him an observer earlier, but whatever. Not to worry about that. And, of course, I bring my stalkers back into my base. Of course, not the smartest thing in the world, because I sent uh, four stalkers back into my base with absolutely nothing protecting what I have here. Ouch. Not definitely good at all, because my Zerg opponent's like, Oh, you brought, like, four stalkers back into his base. He can't possibly have anything defending his expansion. Absolutely not. There you go, and as you can see, I had to cancel the expansion, which would definitely uh, hurt me quite a bit. So, what can I do to prevent a Zerg opponent that's basing up, that's getting a lot of macro hatches, that can scout my base practically at any point in the game, and also has an expansion, right? So, uh, this is this is where we have to make a, some decisive decision making. Well. For one, I probably wasn't producing enough probes, but if, I wa if I'm not producing enough probes in general, and I can't get that big of an army out very fast, why don't I go for in a robotics facility? A robotics facility, because if I build a robotics facility here, build maybe two more uh, gateways, that could probably minimize the amount of money that I truly need in most situations here, and I'll be able to defend against these Zerglings. And then, once I get a decent amount of units, maybe around the 8 minute mark, I go for an attack, I poke into his base, sure he has a whole bunch of spine crawlers, but if I can at least uh, bring his attention to the front of his base, this will allow me to go for an expansion. As you can see, I have about $1,000 here. I could spend all that a lot, a lot, a lot earlier and uh, keep that money really, really low. So, 
anyone that is trying to, you know, critically point out what they're doing wrong. Maybe it was just that they were worrying about getting expansion too early when really you need to probably make more units to defend against Zerg. Maybe you just weren't comfortable enough moving out on the map and you need to be able to be comfortable enough to move out on the map a lot faster. So, of course, Lou Zerg is able to come into my base, do whatever he wants, kill off two of my pylons. That's a lot of money um, that I lose there. I lost about $300 in this, in this entire attack. And uh, he pretty much gets control on the outside of my base. Now, the thing that he probably shouldn't have done is gone to, uh, towards my base, but I think he was just poking in to see exactly what I had. And uh, that's about it. But um, in general, I did nothing to counter what he was doing. I did not, not really counter, but I didn't do anything to support what happened to my expansion. I lost a lot of money here, but I gained $300 from this Nexus, and my money is really high. I should probably spawn in a few more gateways um, and probably stop producing probes just for a little while here until I need to expand. Because in this situation here, I am in a really painful situation where my Zerg opponent can freely expand across the base. And the only way to truly stop that is to create more and more units. And uh, working off three gateways with um, high income of money and gas definitely won't help out too much and of course I saw he was going roaches which would make immortals extremely good in situations such as this so um, that's definitely something I would need to point out so we're gonna speed through the game just a little bit further because I want to get into another game um, sooner uh, sooner than later and of course I move out all my units here and uh, this is where you'll also realize that I'm just a little bit too nervous this is this is what my expansion should have looked like when I made it before having a decent amount of units here um, putting the pylon on the left uh, next to my ramp, build a couple buildings here to block off any units from coming in, and uh, basically just, you know, hold off any sort of pressure. This, is, this should have happened a long time ago. A long time ago. I got two more gateways at least, but that's definitely still not enough. I could have made even more and more units later on in the game. So definitely critically point out the things you're doing wrong in a game that you were watching of yourself. So let me speed through, another gateway being produced, which is good, so that means I want six gateways, which means I'll be able to produce units and never really be low. And look at that, now I brought my money low once again. So, way late in the game, but at least, um, if you can point out that you are at least understanding that you're really high on money and you know how to spend it, that's definitely very good, and getting a cannon up, just to be safe, because, uh, what if I move these units out and go and attack? That's okay. Uh, this is a little bit of an issue here, I noticed as well. I made a second pylon, which is really uh, a bad idea for myself. Um, all I needed was the one pylon to allow a space for just one little position here. So definitely uh, a good idea to point out there. Very, very important. Of course, the forge is out on the field, so I'll be able to get more and more uh, units out here. And I'll be able to move across the base. And of course, go see that he has an expansion. Going to take out the, uh, the gold. Which is alright, but then you see that, his that your opponent's going to be like, Oh, well, I can just go into your opponent's base and be like, Oh, okay, I'm going to go I'm gonna go attack wh whatever I can here. And then I freak out, get a cannon here, get a second cannon here. This is definitely me freaking out, where I'm like, Oh, crap, I really shouldn't be doing this. And of course, um, there's other things into my base. And you're like, whatever, whatever. Not a big deal. So definitely I need to pay attention to not panicking. So that's also important to pay attention here. And Stalker's going to be doing their Stalker thing. Moving out to my opponent's base. And then I see that, oh crap, my opponent has a whole bunch of shit to, uh, to attack my units with. And there you go. And there you go. But what am I doing in my main base? Oh, good, I'm spawning in units. That's always good. So at least I'm spawning in some units there. I don't need to be critically acclaimed um, anger management issue person when I'm paying attention to my main base. And at least that I'm still producing at least some probes at some point uh, in the game. Of course, my chrono boost is really high, so I'll, I'll need to pay attention. If I want to get more units out in the field, I should definitely go ahead <coughs> and cough like that. Uh, but I should definitely go ahead and chrono boost out. Uh, some more units because I have so much corner boost. Why don't I spend that? Good to note. Good to note. This is how this is how you learn in a game of StarCraft 2. You gotta you gotta know when you gotta know when you lose as well. And there's the GG there because obviously I saw he had way too many roaches. So what did we learn from that game? For at least myself, and then we'll look at the game with Bazizzle, of course. Um, what did we learn there? Well, we learned that. 
I definitely don't spend Chrono Boost, <laughs> which is definitely not the most important thing, of course, to point out, but at least that's one thing. I don't spend enough Chrono Boost on, on my units. Maybe that's why my money is not, you know, staying low. If I Chrono Boost out my Warp Gate technology as opposed to just Chrono Boosting out my probes, maybe I'll be able to spend that money a little bit faster because, of course, 50 minerals to Chrono Boost out, Chrono Boost out two probes may not be as good as spending all that money on on warp gates and getting a couple extra stalkers out there on the field, which is really, really cool. And, of course, another thing to point out is uh, I need to be safer on my expanding. So, have you guys ever had that position where, like, yeah, oh, I'm going for an expansion, but I don't feel safe about it. I need to be a little bit safer on my expanding, especially against Zerg, because I have no idea when they're attacking. Maybe I should go with scouting a little bit more. So, um, you have to be critically crucial on what you're doing wrong. Make sure that you're getting maybe upgrades out for units. Make sure you're spending that money. Um, I know a lot of players out there have a very big issue trying to spend that money fast enough, because it does grow really quickly once you get to that point where you're creating more and more, more probes on the field as fast as you possibly can. So I'm going to take a small break, about a two minute break, and we're going to go directly into uh, a game with Bazizzle and learn how to critically um, help him become a better gamer, a better gamer as a Zerg player because he is a bronze and we want to try and get him up to silver as Zerg because he used to play Terran and he played really well as Terran and now he's just trying to move up from bronze now to silver using Zerg. So we'll take a look at that on the other end of the perspe uh, perspective of, uh, of Protoss, pretty much. So we don't even have to worry about Protoss anymore because finally we're going to be looking at a game without Protoss. Don't go anywhere, guys, because we will be back in two minutes. <laughs> 